Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Killer Psyche ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the app today. Mind of a Monster, the podcast from ID, is back. And this season, they're covering The Butcher Baker. In the 80s, over 20 women go missing in Anchorage, Alaska. Women turning up dead in the woods and others are kidnapped. But their stories are not taken seriously by the police even though these crimes all point to one man. On this podcast, uncover how serial killer Richard Hansen evades arrest for over a decade. And hear from the victims, along with police and Alaska State Troopers, who were there on the ground investigating this case. Listen to Mind of a Monster, The Butcher Baker, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. A listener note, this episode contains adult content and is not suitable for everyone. Please be advised. I'm your host, Candace DeLong, and each week I'll bring you the latest headlines and happenings in the world of true crime. Today, Julie and I will be talking about Dr. Death, Bad Magic, and Dr. Sirhat Gumrukju. Dr. Sirhat has the type of brilliance that has the capacity to see across discipline in science and connect things that others don't see. He's a researcher. Scientists, doctors, renowned experts were saying, genius, genius, genius. A healer. People that knew him were convinced that he saved their life. And a suspected murderer. That was a clip from season four of Wondery's series, Dr. Death. Candace, this season of Dr. Death focuses on Dr. Serhat Gumrukju, who posed as a doctor who had miracle cures for terminal cancer and AIDS. But it was revealed during the series that he is simply a con man. This is something that we've been seeing a lot. There are always con men, especially in the medical world. This man not only perpetrated medical scams, he also did every other kind of scam. Is that normal for a con artist to switch between such extremes. When I was reading the history and listening to the podcast, it hit me like a brick upside the head. It's like, oh, this guy, every red blood cell in his body wants to be bad. And if he can't be bad over here, then he'll be bad over here. And that makes sense because if somebody is a psychopath, they're a psychopath through and through. What does that mean? It means the two hallmark characteristics. They feel no remorse or guilt for hurting other people. And if it works for them, they're going to repeat it over and over because they don't feel bad about it. This guy's in the psychopath category. He's intelligent. He's definitely got the gift of gab. And he knows people. He targeted people that he knew he could scam. And as you and I were discussing earlier, definitely not people who don't have any money. Oh, no, no. Uh, I, I didn't see him setting up a free clinic in the tenderloin of San Francisco to help people. Oh, no. No. Nope. Not at all. He was in it for the bucks. He was pretending to cure people with serious illnesses, but none of the treatments were real. He targeted people, as we've said, who had little hope to begin with, I think the clearest example of his psychopathic tendencies is when he treated the child with cancer. He built the child's family out of almost $300,000, and he did not care that the child was dying and that the family was grieving. And he did not care that the child died before he even did his treatments. He still wouldn't give them back their money. It struck me, learning the facts about this case, how many times he was successful in doing exactly what he did to this little boy's family. Certainly, the people had to have been told by legit, caring, experienced medical doctors, your child is terminal. I'm assuming that child was treated, but the treatment was unsuccessful. 
But what was Sir Hat doing? He was selling them hope. That's the worst. Nothing is more desperate than knowing someone you love, or even yourself, your days are numbered. And when it's your child, you will move mountains for them to not die. And the parents or anybody that went along with this was desperate to do whatever he told them would work. It's almost worse than a serial killer. Because you really trust these people, these medical individuals, and you don't have that knowledge. You don't know whether or not they're telling you the truth. I mean, there's a little internal thing probably that says, "Uh, something's too good to be true. It's probably not true. Mm -hmm. But he not only did it with terminal patients, he did it with patients whose protocol, medical protocol, such as the people had HIV, AIDS, he did it with them. Their protocol was working. And then he claimed that he could cure it. He could cure AIDS, not just treat it. And Mm -hmm. he took these people and he sold them this bag of goods and they went off of the protocol that was helping them and went on to his, which as we know, did not help them. To put such trust in people, to take them and just twist their lives, like literally hold their lives in your hands, that is just twisted. You know, the difference between that and the little boy we've been talking about, the little boy was terminal. And somebody with HIV on the protocol is going to be okay. It is not a cure. It is a treatment. It is a very effective treatment for someone living with HIV. And he took them off their regime to get them to buy his treatment plan, his shtick, his medications. He's selling you something where he can put your money in his pocket and it's no damn good. But he's been studying illusion for a while. He was in Turkey studying pre-med when he dropped out to become a magician. So that should tell you everything you need to know. A magician. What does, I almost fell off my chair laughing. I was holding my sides. I was laughing so hard. Wait a minute, let me get this straight. He's on his way to a distinguished license that a lot of people would love to have. And he drops out to do what? Trick people, deceive people. Now you see it, now you don't. That says it all, doesn't it, Julie? It does. It does. And what's really scary is the people that still believe the illusion. That is what's really scary about this whole situation. That's the best con of all, is that after the person has been deceived, they've opened their pocketbook, usually cons usually involve money or something of value, they don't realize they've been scammed. And I think there's also ego involved in the part of the victim? Who wants to admit they were scammed? I don't know if you recall a case, maybe 15 years ago, some guy landed in Manhattan and he had a a foreign accent and he said his last name was Rockefeller and people couldn't get enough of him. He was being invited to the top drawer parties and they were writing checks and they were just opening their wallets for him. And then when it came out, he was not a Rockefeller. All the people, you couldn't find any of his victims. They ran for the hills. Why? Because wealthy people are loath to admit they trusted the wrong person and lost money. So they take their losses, go away, and keep their mouth shut. A lot of them didn't even want to prosecute. Well, I don't think it's just wealthy people. We're all, none of us want to be wrong, you know, and a lot of us have an ego towards that. But Candace, that example, the Rockefeller example is perfect because there was a Danish businessman. He owns that company, Pandora, and he bought Sarah Hatt's ideas even after he knew that he had been accused of fraud. Mm -hmm. He put them in a company, a company that was named Enochian. The term Enochian, Enochian, is from the biblical figure Enoch. And he was a source of hidden mystical knowledge. Oh, my God. Huh. What? I mean, you're going to name your company after that? Why don't you just say uh, Phony R Us or Bullshit Incorporated? <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's so scary what we are willing to 
go for and believe when the truth is right in front of us. I also see similarities between this and Elizabeth Holmes and Macriarini. Mm-hmm. I think that this is worse than Theranos with Elizabeth Holmes, don't you? Oh, he's much worse, much worse. But Elizabeth Holmes did horrible things, make no mistake. But her crimes, other than the death by suicide of one of her company's scientists, did not lead to anyone's death. She preyed more on the bigger corporations and the misdiagnoses that came out of it were collateral damage. If her machines had not been pulled, who knows what would have happened. But Serhat, he was targeting individual people, some of them terminal, who were suffering and scared and giving them hope. I think that's much worse. Right. With all of this, Serhat is not in jail right now for fraud. What he's in jail for is murder. And the murder that he tried to pull off, it's like something that the Cohen brothers wrote. Why is it the murder that got him put away? I think the reason he got arrested and charged with murder is he went out of his lane. His lane was financial crimes. He tried to have someone killed because that person threatened to expose his lies and his life as he knew it. But he's really grandiose. We've already determined that. And he thought he could pull it off. And the commission of the crime was so bad, it was laughable. Not for the victim, obviously. But fortunately, unless he is somehow able to con the jury, he will be put away for a long, long time. Well, we'll find out soon. He's scheduled for trial on October 7th of this year. This is a crazy story, and we've only touched on a little bit of it. So if you want to hear more about Serhat, check out season four of Dr. Death, Bad Magic.